40 years ago, very young. <laughs> Only my second movie. Yeah. So, yes. So, uh, so it was uh, quite a great experience. Mm -hmm. You've been in some amazing films. I'm wondering, where does this fall in your own personal list? As, as one of the most amazing. I mean, I was very lucky in my career to start out with three of the greatest directors ever, which were Visconti, and then Bob Fosse, and then Kubrick. You know? and, and one came right after the other. So, and they. You know, they were all very different experiences, very different types of directors. Bob Fosse being the most sort of actor's director, you know, he really challenged one constantly and, and was always working and getting the best performances out of his actors and very energetic and, and, and very quick and smart and, and uh, it was brilliant working with him, you know, he, he was, a, was a constant kind of um, well, I think working with great artists like that, they are such um, perfectionists. They push you to be, you know, always better than yourself and as perfect as you can possibly get, you know, in, in their eyes. So it's 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 a bettering, you know, it's a lesson in life too. It's taught me a lot about life, about discipline, about giving the best of oneself, about you know, patience about all kinds of things. You know, it's, it's really a, a school, a learning school to have worked with great people. And these, you know, Cabaret as the others have sort of remained. I think they they go through time. They don't age. That's a sign of a great movie. I think. You know, they they, they don't age. You can watch them forever at any. You know, the generations. I think. There's no generation gap. I think everybody loves these films. You know, this film as much as the other generation, the younger generation does. It, it captures also so much um, historically. It's interesting. Culture-wise, it's interesting. It has great strength and depth and, and to it. It's you know working in Germany too on location at the time it was quite an amazing thing because we were in Berlin in East Berlin and uh, you know the wall was still up in Berlin so there was behind that wall was such you know you could still feel that the, the, you could feel that oppression, that pain that, that uh, all of that darkness that was going on still and to capture that, you know, to work in that environment where you could still, you could feel that as we were working in the streets of Berlin, you know, gave the movie a dimension to that I, you know, that, that I think really captured the, the dangers and the, the horror of what was going on in those places in Germany. And we were actually often, you know, they would come into to the studio in Munich where they were doing the cabaret numbers and, and sometimes they would forbid certain, you know, they would, they would want to forbid certain things uh, to be said or, you know. Really? Yeah. In the 70s? That's wow, and you, you think that there was still a wall up in Germany, you know, that separating, uh, and one side was like uh, totally communistic, you know, repressed, and, you know, sort of, and, and the other was trying to be free Germany. Now, of course, when that wall came down, I don't know if you remember that, yes. I kept a piece of that wall. Oh, wow. Because it, it was such an amazing opening for those people who would live that life, you know, like. And so repressed for so many years, so miserable, to all of a sudden freedom, you know, is the most important thing for a human being to have, to have freedom. And so Berlin still had that, even East Berlin, you could feel that. That because it's the same country, you know, it was just there, the wall was right there, so it's not like it was another country like you know, Russia or China, whatever, it was there. So to film in the streets of Berlin and to film on location like that, a film which was about all, you know, all of that sort of really um, some very, very terrifying kind of. Um, 
undercurrent of what was going on in those days. It was very powerful, actually, to live that, and we felt it all the time, you know. So I think it added a lot, and it was very smart and not possible to want to do it there because. You know, it's it's not the same when you're filming, uh, you know, in a country that's that has a different energy or in a studio. You know, it's not the same. Right. Did, did the cast ever get together after you were done filming and had a oh, long yes. day? Did you have fun? Did you go out and let go? No, no, we've, we've been great friends. We've been, and we've been friends ever since, which is so wonderful because, you know, I've kept in touch with uh, Joel. Like, Liza's one of my, my closest friends in the world, Michael, too, and Joel. And we always see each other and keep in touch. So it's wonderful to sort of have this reunion and still all be here. Help you know to talk about it, to to see each other again, to it's like an old friend reunion, you know, and, and it's very moving, I think, to have lived through experiences like that, to have lived through that kind of success, to have this movie brought to our lives so much, you know, this film to all of us, you know, um, but it's it's a blessing to live something like that, you know, it's a very very rare. I think, and it's rare to be here 40 years later celebrating this too. I think it's exceptional. And you haven't aged. <laughs> what? You have not aged. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. When I see myself in cabaret, I've got this little round baby face. <laughs> well, you look terrific. Oh, thank you. At what point did you realize that the film wasn't just a cultural milestone? I think, you know, you never realize when you're making a film what it's going to be success. And you just don't think about the scope of a film. You just do your work and you enjoy the moment that you're, you know, you're in the moment, you're living in a, a family of, of film and it's a wonderful experience and you never think, oh my goodness, what is it going to be? Cabaret, I mean that, all of the Academy Awards, the awards it won, the scope globally that it had, it was so extraordinary that we were bedazzled all of us by it, you know, it was unexpected. <laughs> It was Bob Fosse's first film, actually, he died in the theatre, you know, so brilliant, I mean, he's such a brilliant man, and um, just, it was awesome, actually, to live through something like that. And it's still there. <laughs> do you do you watch it? Did you did you watch any of? I see other? it occasionally because it comes on television mm -hmm. quite often yes. in Europe too. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've seen it on television over the years. You know, uh, in France and Italy and various countries. But I have not seen this new Blu-ray no. movie, which I think is great. Do you have a favorite scene, like more challenging? Um, they were all challenging, actually, because, <laughs> as I said, I was, uh, you know, new, and, and it was like my second movie, so, um, and, uh, you know, Bob keeps you on your toes all the time, so every scene was, uh, was interesting to do, and, uh, you know, when you're working with people like that, you really want to do well. <laughs> you really want to do good, you know, in their eyes. And so, you, you know, you take, you, it's a challenge every day to be, to be the best you can be. Well, it's one of the most beautiful written musicals of all time. Yes, it really is, isn't it? And the music is just so beautifully photographed, yeah. the music, and everything is exceptional. It's also rare to see such beauty now in film. You know, I really think it's a shame that there, there are so few films that capture everything like that. 
them to capture incredible talent, incredible music, incredible photography. You yes. know, we all look great. Mm -hmm. um, and the period is a fascinating period. And decadence, I think, in film is one of the most interesting things you can film. You know, I think, you know, it's just the whole package of film like that. And I've seen so many people inspired over the years by cabaret. In other movies I've seen, I think, oh my goodness. You know, this is, they've taken that from cabaret and they've taken that from Bob's moves and this is his choreography and that's like the way cabaret, you know, they're trying to... You know, Chicago also is, you know, Bob Fosse. I see a lot of similarities in some of, you know, his style, so brilliant. Well, they, I love Chicago, the film, too. Yes. He really did. It was an homage to Statue, you know, to Bob. It was a, I love that movie. I thought yes. it was brilliantly done and photographed and just beautiful. I it's his favorite movie, I think, Cabaret. He told me that. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so he uh, was really like an, an homage to, to, to Bob. So he did that film. And he did it really well. I mean, he's one of the great directors, I think. Yeah. But he was such a newcomer, as he said, when he did yeah. the Cabaret. Were the other actors really welcoming to him? Yes. The comedians, I mean, because they're all, I mean, as you know, they're most generous, wonderful people, like human beings, you know. And, and they made me feel instantly comfortable, I mean, you know, instantly, and therefore we just bonded immediately, and they were very supportive, and Liza has always been warm and generous as a person, so is John and Michael, so I felt immediately comfortable, which is also rare, because not everybody makes you feel like that on a movie set, you know? So that's also a rare thing, and it's a wonderful thing, I think it's, you know, when you do this business, we're lucky enough to do work in a business that we love with incredible people and, and I think it's all about giving anyway to be an actor. This, this world is all about what you give back and, and what you, you know, um, exchange that you get from working with people and what you give back to the world, you know, and so it has to be generous. It, it can't be, I mean, in my eyes, it can't be anything else else but that, you know, we're just like channels of, of whatever we, we are to, to, to sort of share with uh, everybody else, and that's the beauty of it. That's why it's so exceptional to be able to do this work, because it's, uh, it's, it's not about yourself, it's about just like the, the sharing of the working with people and giving back and being able to have this thing with great experiences and play fabulous parts where you can get into fabulous characters and become, you know, other people and learn from those other people too, you know? No, I didn't identify with her because she's, her life has nothing to do with my life and I'm not that kind of a girl. <laughs> But it was, um, you know, she, I certainly was sort of well educated and, um, and you know, you, when you play a part, when you, you just kind of, even though you don't, if you don't relate to every part of that person, you will always relate to some part of that person, or at least if you, you can always find something that will help you relate to that person and the rest is something that you, you, uh, you build inside yourself, you discover from uh, maybe parts of yourself that you didn't know, or maybe other things in the world, or other things that you've seen, or, and you just create something, and uh, that's wonderful too, so it's a combination of um, instincts also, and, and, and then you work on a part, you know, you really prepare for, for a part, what you're doing, you get into your character before you're, way before you get on the set, you know, you just arrive and you have to be prepared, you have to be that person when you, when you get there, you know, so then you just forget about it, you just are that for the time you're doing it, you know. Learning to speak with a German accent, what is that like? Well, I studied with a coach uh, uh, to perfect that because it was not—it's not easy, you know. It's a certain upper 
class German accent. It's not just any class German accent. It's like when I did Mary Linden, I had to be an upper class, aristocratic English, you know, countess. So that's a specific kind of English too. So you learn that with, with, you know, I was coached, I studied with that. And I must say that even Stanley Kubrick thought I was German. When he saw Cabaret and he wanted me for Mary Linden, he thought I was German. So that was a good, nice compliment. <laughs> I thought so. Me too, I had no idea. What? You did? Yeah. No, really? Yeah. Well, that's thank you. That's a compliment. Sure.